Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's amazing space colony adventure extraordinaire. My name's Twitchy, and we're playing in the LZ Alpha, where we have 10 duplicates trying to make their way into the future with as much comfort as we can possibly give them. And right now, we're having problems with the power flow, and the ways that I would like to address that is, of course, taking advantage of this super hot steam generator that I have over here, this geyser. And I will be getting on with that, but the problem is, the problem is totally the opposite to what the problem is in the real life. We do not have enough plastic on the go. Now, down the bottom of the map here, we have discovered ourselves two little oil reservoirs. We've got one there and we've got one there. They are actually probably our key to the future. But I don't want to do it like that. No, indeed, I do not. If we go to the top of the screen here, you can see that I've got a little setup where we have a, like a lava trying to uh, trying to make itself into a slick over there. Uh, also, I've got some bottle emptiers down here. These two things are going to play a very, very big um, part in the future here. I want to grab a bottle emptier. I want to like slap down a whole few of those. Uh, and I also want to get this lava egg underway. Unfortunately, it is in the middle of the night right now. So watching these guys sleep is pretty much all that we can do for the moment. All right, the sleeping have slept and the morning has broken. So we're going to see what people are up to here, grabbing some rock and moving around. What I want to do is get down here. Definitely want to push up the priority of these because these are now the most important thing. I'm even tempted to go, hey, you, you see this here? Uh, not only do I want these all worked on, but I also want this bottle empty yeah, emptied with the uh, the highest of priorities. Because down below, as I was saying, not only do we have oil reservoirs, but we had a little bit of a spillage a little while ago. So we, uh, we, we mopped up a whole bunch of the oil down here. And I would like these oils to be moved up into the bottle emptier so that we can suck it all up using this pump which goes into the uh, oil refinery and then we then turn it into polymers so that should work out well uh, for the the, uh, the the ends that we need copy the settings as we see as the oil is being emptied out into the bottle emptiers it's flowing its way down into this liquid pump which picks it up and shuffles it down towards the oil refinery over here looking nice of course, a very important part of this process is that this lava egg gets uh, incubated as quick as possible. It's got lullaby for the extra 20% bonus there. Beautiful. You gotta wonder, with this many shine bugs in one area, is there any point where you can build up enough light in one spot to, like, melt something? Do, do these guys produce heat or anything like that? I don't think they do. It is literally just brightness, but I, I would like to know. I would like to know. Okay, that's enough at, like, panic stations. Let's leave that like that, and then hopefully someone should come in and have their, uh, their job to be the oil refinery here, and that would then produce more plastics, eventually, and also more power. That, that's kind of a thing that we've got. If we uh, follow the F6 here, uh, I thought that putting it past the liquid pipe like this, the uh, the power... The, polymer press would take out any petroleum that it needs beforehand but it turns out it needs a little bit of a reservoir but that doesn't bother me because all the stuff that comes through here is turned into petroleum and when it goes past the uh, the polymer press here it will come up and into a generator that all the excess gets turned into power which Forrest has very nicely come along to demonstrate here you can see the polymer press is literally just skimming a little bit off the top of these five kilogram packets coming out at 4.167 uh, maybe we what we want to do is put like uh, a tank here, a reservoir, and then feed it out on drip feed at about 100 grams. I know it's only taking 40, but we do want some power coming out as well. Got enough oil in the pump to keep the, the process going, and this is producing about 2 kilowatts of power, which if we come and have a look up here, should be producing... We're still not producing enough power. Ouch. Ouch. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Ah, oh, we've got an overheat problem. What is going on with that? I mean, people are going to come along and um, bring in a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so uh, let's disable this building for the moment. Thanks. Uh, and we'll figure out what to do about that. We obviously just need a cooling loop running by. Do we have a hydrogen drop-off anywhere? Let's have a look. F7. Uh, it is kind of coming past here. We could just jump over, pick up some heat, and then go back down. And then this is... I mean, this is all waste product anyway. It's coming through at 29. What is the temperature that this gets trouble at? Overheat temperature at 75. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do it like that then. We'll do it like that. Let's get a bit of ventilation on the go. I want to get a gas bridge. We'll jump over there. Uh, we'll go radiant gas pipe around like this. And then another gas bridge jumping over back. And yeah, that, that'll be it, really. That there, that there, and then a crossover like this. And maybe we want to cut that, but we'll, we'll just split it for the moment and see what happens. Oh yeah, it's just generally hot down here. Maybe we want to bring it further across this way as well. Yeah, yeah, actually, maybe we will. Oh man, and now we got an overheating combustion engine. This is exactly why I want to get the plastics made, so that we can move on to uh, active cooling systems. This, uh, this 
hydrogen anti-entropy device down here. It's pretty nice, but it's not like the amazingness that is steam, gener uh, steam cooling. So in an effort to slow down the melting, let's bring this down to 100 grams per second. In fact, I'm just going to do it like that. Beautiful, beautiful. And that should hopefully slow down the amount of heat that's being transferred from this like 60 degree uh, oil into the polymer press there. That's not quite the way I intended it to happen, but it'll work. I'll take it. Let's try, actually, let's, let's try breaking this here. Oh, I can't do it in this view. Okay, so I've forced the gas to go round in a loop. My next question is, if they've got a T-junction rather than the bridge coming straight out of this, does it split it equally and then this becomes an outflow? Or does it? do we have the weird backflow issue that we had last time? Oh, also, also, we've got some petroleum flowing at quite... No, 500 kilograms is not what we set this to. Why has this not been changed? All right, let's try it like this instead. Okay, that's cool. Uh, F7 for the gas flow. And no, it still does weird backflow items. Okay, that's... That's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted at all. We will break this up now and let it go around in the loop, I suppose. The big problem, the big worry that I've got is that it will transfer the temperature from the refinery here to the polymer press. And that's kind of what was going on here, and we didn't want that. Okay, the temperature seems to be holding at a steady 53-ish, or keeps popping up and then back down. We'll see what's going on with the hydrogen flow, but I think we should be okay. The main problem here, I don't know if it's a problem, is the fact that the uh, the liquid valve that we put in to try and limit the amount of uh, temperature transfer, it's actually meaning that this is running longer. I don't know whether that's actually the thing, but this this is one of the, one of the uh, situations we're keeping an eye on. Oh, uh, look who's joined us. All right, beautiful. Now we've got to wait five days for him to actually be old enough to do anything. Oh, oh, we got some crude oil anyway. Beautiful. Okay, the time is now. We're going to start thinking about where we're going to, what we're going to do with this steam turbine. I'm going to leave it mostly locked in this situation here. Oh, hello. Yeah, so we'll go and have a look at the printables first. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at the blueprint down here, see what we get. So water, fungal spores. I'll take those. Thank you very much. That should enable us to get a few more mushrooms growing. Um, not, not that we ever really have enough slime on the go. Ah, look at the pufflet over here, though. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Anyway, as I was saying, steam, steam vent over here. This thing is producing steam at a ridiculously high temperature of 500 degrees centigrade. That will melt just about anything that I want to put down in front of it. So we're not going to really deal with that straight away. What we want to do, of course, is to get um, a, a, a much bigger space above it so that we can be uh, letting the... Uh, the the natural area, cool it down. What's the word that I want to use it? Kind of like the bulk of the area, the, the, the thermal mass of the the area around this steam bed. We're going to use that to cool down the steam enough before it touches the uh, the actual generators up there. Now, I have been looking a lot on the internet for the past couple of days, and I've been looking in particular Steve Raptor, Tony Advance, and Francis... And Francis John, didn't totally have to go and look him up, were the people that I've mainly been trying to uh, to, to follow on and watch here. Ah, oh, look, we need enough steam turbines for a second one. Uh, and they've come up with a whole bunch of plans and ideas, uh, and I have t had a look and taken what I can on board and then just decided that, you know, I'm going to come up with my own design instead. So no doubt this will absolutely self-implode, destroy itself and go badly, badly wrong. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. But we'll 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 just see how that goes. Okay, so my first first job is to try and clear out this area in here so that we can start thinking about I don't I don't really want to clear out this stuff in here actually. So we can start thinking about how we're gonna get the two steam turbines up there and uh, functional. Of course, one of the big problems we've got is the fact that I don't actually have enough plast uh, plastics to make the entirety of this uh, process in one go. And Miss Lone Man Frank getting on with the job over here, but there are a few things that I have learned in my studies whilst we've been uh, going around and learning a few of these things. One of the things that I uh, have been annoyed about recently, but I haven't known how to fix it, is this sort of input here of lots of tiny, tiny, tiny little packets. It turns out there is a way that you can fix this. So if I organise this so we have the, the input going down into this line and we just got to kind of judge how many different elements we've got coming through here one two three four let's call it five or six elements uh, so two four five six okay let's do that and then we want the last one to be going the other direction okay then we get our gas pipes and we connect all of these up and what's going to happen here is all these gases coming in from this waste pipe are going to go, go flow past all of these inputs until it comes up to this output where 
if it can, it will be picked up and, fr and pushed into this sorting system. Uh, which, hopefully, most of the time, everything will just get pushed up and put in there. Now, all of the gas is going to get forced back, and they can only come through these uh, uh, gas bridges here if the gas coming through this one actually matches what's going on through the pipe. Now, this only works if the system is full. If the system is not full, it will just start pushing it through, uh, pushing it through the end here uh, anyway. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this works out. I think, actually, we're going to end up with a small number of gases circulating just round inside this area here but I'm kind of fine with that as long as it gets us full packets going through this system when we're not like wasting energy dealing with like these tiny tiny bubbles uh, also I want to come down and see how our slick was doing because uh, he is the the route to all plastics right now and we we need more plastics also what's going on with the temperature over here because I'm super worried that we're gonna get up to too high a temperature that does appear to be uh, going up rather than holding steady let's have a look at these gas packets here we got 30 four coming in uh, and it's uh, what what are we leaving at 37 I mean that's kind of working but at the same time kind of not if I get my ventilation pipe out here we make this one radiant as well let's see what happens okay first day is done we cleared out a fair bit of room we started opening up a nice little area up here we've set everything to sweep and I've put down a bunch of uh, storage bins down here so we should hopefully the next day be set for doing a whole bunch of stuff down here down over this side we've got the plastic being made but it is actually pretty slow i don't think we're taking any more damage than we currently have the temperature seems to be holding steady at about oh, no we have we've gained three degrees haven't we okay i'm gonna double the flow through this valve so we can see if the uh the petroleum that will make it through because at the moment this is this um plastic maker is picking up all the petroleum that we make but i'd like to send about half of it through to this generator over here even though we're gonna have some heating issues i just i feel like we need to try and pull the heat out of here as quick as possible uh, but we need the power we need the power oh my gosh look at our power systems right now empty of course next time we'll be getting on with this oil reservoir double oil reservoir and a natural gas geyser up there uh if you don't know the oil reservoir itself let's try and find it is it in the refinery no it's in the station utilities utilities all right the uh the, the actual oil refinery itself outputs uh not only oil but also natural gas and we'll let the natural gas kind of percolate its way up here because of course all the carbon dioxide should push it up that way right okay we've got it running we've got half of it going through is it producing more heat than we can deal with i don't know we're up to 60 at the moment hopefully that's where it's going to stay because that's actually what the carbon dioxide that's actually less than the carbon dioxide around it so uh yeah maybe we're producing power maybe not uh, I'm not sure if it's totally worth it. Uh, let's come up here. Uh, the jumbo battery is what I'm after. Mm, might not actually be worth it. And the last piece in place here. Let's see what happens. This should all now start flowing back and around and in itself. And hopefully, at some point, all the gases will start merging up and we won't get anything... Um, locking up too heavy i'm noticing the packets are definitely increasing in size and now hopefully at some point something will spit out the other end um i have been shown that this doesn't necessarily spit the full packets out the other side it just spits out when the system is full which is not ideal but it's like 75 percent efficient i mean there are definitely some natural gas full sections there oh no it doesn't work <sighs> Okay, I'm wondering whether it's backed up, because I've gone and looked at the video that I saw earlier, and this is almost exactly the right setup, apart from, you know, it's on the other way, other direction. They were going this way down the line, which uh, it shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem, right? It shouldn't be a problem at all. So I'm going to try and disconnect this little gas pipe over here to see if it's actually just like a flow issue, uh, because it doesn't know where to go at this corner or something like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out about that. Okay, that did not help. Hmm... Okay, I uh, spent some time mucking around and trying to uh, play with it. It turned out what I needed was a gas pipe. I assume that was not a gas pipe, a gas bridge, sorry. I assume that a valve would also work to start sending the, the directionality in this. But as, you, as I said, you can see that it's not necessarily throwing out full packets, but it is stacking up most of the packets so that when this is full, the chances are a full packet will come out. 
Okay, I've watched this for long enough. Now, I think it is indeed saving me money and effort by putting longer packs through. Uh, maybe we'd like to stack up some of these chlorines as well at some point, but, you know, that's that's never going to work like that. But, yeah, they, these guys going through in larger packets definitely stopping the number of times we need to turn the filters on, which in turn saves us power. It's not saving us a great deal of power, but it is saving us some power. Of course, the knock-on effect is the hydrogen's coming through in larger packets, so it's not coming through as often, and thus it's not doing as much cool. Hmm. Oh no, somehow you've been born in here. You're gonna die, buddy. You should have been up here with all your friends. You know what else might help? If I throw down a couple of temp shift plates into there, this should then pop push off the water, uh, sorry, the heat into both the water and the air around us. What am I even making these out of by default? Igneous rock, slow heating. Probably not quite what I wanted. How about aluminium ore? That sounds a lot better. Use, let's use that instead. Oh, we're not quite there for the second one, though. We started off with like 31 on its own. So two two cycles later to have over 100 actually being made. That's pretty cool. What's going on down there right now? Let's have a look. Of course, that I am talking about is the plastic production. Ah, it's getting there. Getting there. It says there's 200 just laying on the floor, but of course half of that is going to be for the other steam turbine. So, like, the water comes from this liquid vent, dribbles out here, and somehow forces more of itself through into this side? 160 grams, what about this? 160, so it does actually balance out, it just looks bigger here. Oh yeah, that first steam turbine getting put into place, love it, love it. Let's see where the outputs are coming from. So that's not actually quite where I wanted, though, I suppose we can bring it out and over. What I want to do with this is to get a raging liquid pipe. Now this is coming out here at 95 degrees, so we're going to go around like this, and we're going to just kind of like jump it out over there. Maybe we didn't want it to have the radiant at the bottom. In fact, now that I think about it, we probably want this to be like insulated at the bottom here so that we can then dump it out with fire a liquid vent down here. Now, I'm not sure whether that's going to hold off, hold true to being able to actually do what I want it to do. Obviously, the thing that I want it to do is to come across and keep this below 100 degrees C because the water coming out of here is about 90. And then we can come around and dump it back into here for uh, more cooling, right? Because we're trying to keep this below 200 degrees C, if possible. Okay, another cycle down. We've got all of the insulated tiles put into place. I say all of them. We've got the majority of them. The ones that I'm in particularly interested in are these ones across the top here because they need to uh, be in place before we can put the steam turbines in place. So that's all good. We're getting some wires put down, but more importantly, we're getting this actual wire. I meant pipes up there, sorry. Uh, we're getting this actual wire put down so that we can uh, power up all the systems here. Oh, at some point, a printing pod has become available and I have not noticed. All right, let's hit that blueprint. What are we going to shine in? Rust. Go with the Rust. I'm not sure how we're doing. Uh, you know what? Let's let's stop and have a look. Resources over here. Uh, it's not going to tell us. Maybe in the ore, does it? No. Okay. I'm not sure actually where they put rust. Consumable ore. Okay. We got 17 tons of it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take it anyway. C can you please go away? Uh, I'm gonna take it anyway because we got we got enough shine nymphs. In fact, we have a shine nade. Uh, you know what? No, I've changed my mind. We're gonna, we're gonna put them in here. But yeah, but how is my shine nado doing down here? Uh, they kind of dissipated a little bit. That's a shame. They're kind of all moved around into different areas that that is actual great shame oh we are about to run out of water down here that's not great how are you doing red signal you're on the right temperature why are you not open because you're not below the right temperature i get it i get it all right well let's put this up to 42 uh and we'll just let that flow for a little bit i want to watch the water actually like come spilling on out of here and see how that actually deals with it okay that's looking good that's looking good the hot water has definitely moved in a little bit though so uh we'll see if a change yeah it does happen I forgot that this would be empty up here. Hmm. Maybe we need to make that a mesh tile. Hmm, it was a vacuum and now it's got filled back in. Okay, that's interesting. That's cool. That's cool that that happens, but that's very interesting. Yeah, I know these aren't reachable at the moment, but I've also put these down as radiant gas pipes to uh, aid in the chilling. Oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Oh, wow. Look, we've put the uh, temperature shift plates into place and we have halved the temperature. Boom, it's just gone. Nice, nice. And the bottom drops out of my world again. The natural gas geyser has become dormant. This means we are out of power. Oh no, I don't even know where there's enough coal together. Oh, 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 this is gonna be bad. 
Ghosts with the Spectre of Zero Power on the horizon. What I've got done over here is set up a manual generator and a gas pump, and I'm starting taking away these insulated tiles, although for some reason the uh, deconstruct isn't showing up here. Uh, it's something that I have noticed, and I should probably report on the bug forum, that if uh, they get interrupted in a deconstruct, say they need some oxygen and run away to go get some, uh, they will just clear the job, which uh, doesn't doesn't seem right to me. doesn't seem right. But yeah, as I was saying, with the Spectre of No Power like looming on the horizon, over there I thought that I might just go ahead and start preparing things for turning this on uh, things such as uh, putting closing this area up completely and starting to think about how we're going to pump out all the gases I'm also wondering if we can get that hydrogen out there but I'm, I'm not entirely certain uh, we will definitely try our best everybody was like oh, you should fill the place in with uh, solid tiles and then open it back up again and I'm like yeah but we could just pump out over here uh, so that's what I'm gonna try so <laughs> Ah, I just realized what's going on here. So, of course, we're now dependent on the hatches for coal. Okay, that's... That's gonna be interesting. What are you doing, Jelly? You you down here? Well, you're actually gonna do some life support. It doesn't tell me what you are actually gonna do, though. Just doing some life support. Lumber counts as the life support. Okay, that that's kind of fine. I'm down with that. I kind of wish this power supply to coal generator would be a higher priority, but I suppose they're both at eight. So what are you going to do? You know what? I'm going to bring this down to an eight and make them all the same priority. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, and that's a whole cycle where it doesn't actually look like they did anything. But they, they put they put the tiles in. That counts, right? <laughs> okay, so we got the gas pump finally up and running. This means that we are venting most of the material from inside this chamber out into the wild. But I just thought that actually maybe it would make more sense if we took it down and into the waste gas line. Uh, so that's being dealt with slowly but surely. But I've got to say, even with Mad Frank's mad building skills, these insulated tiles don't have to take a while to get built. Ha <laughs> ha So I've kept them working overnight with the power of the alert abuse. <laughs> oh, is that it? Is that it? Nighttime's actually struck, so they don't. Oh no, here comes uh, Miss Align to do a little bit more work. And then she's got the old sleep. Uh, sleep errand to do I don't, I don't know what to call it when they're like because it's not really an errand is it even though it's on the errand list yeah I, I don't know i don't know it's uh we'll call it the sleep errand okay next morning thanks to that uh on the alert uh, amount of deliveries that we made last night uh miss line can come along and just do all the build orders which means this one is going to be up and ready to go unfortunately we are still Let's call it 30 bits of plastic short. And it is working, or at least it was working last I looked. You can see that we got a little bit on the go, but we have no liquids in the pipes, which is uh, kind of the thing that we're waiting on. Okay, here comes the Dr. Captain subs coming along to do uh, the old uh, petroleum twist. But I don't know whether we've got enough power inside it right now. Like zero energy store to actually finish that. Ah, how, how's the hatches doing? We got much coal over here. 300 kilograms of coal. It's, it's in there. That's... That's not helpful. Wait, wait. Oh, oh, and this has just gone off. So let's see if we've got a blueprint. Let's give you something where we can make some power from. No, I don't want either of these. I'm actually going to reject all of that because both of these are more trouble than they are worth to deal with. The pips. I mean, they're just the pips. They're awkward. They're, they're horrible. They're, they're, blah, blah. But also the shove vaults only eat regolith, which is found at the very top of the map over here, which we don't have access to right now, which is probably something that we should start working on as soon as this is sorted. Oh, my puff prince is starving. What? Oh, no. I mean, like, this is not the end of the world, but I'd rather not. All right, now we've got the gases being diverted down and into the waistline. Beautiful. Why, why is this waistline? Oh, because we don't have the power here. That's fine. That's fine. All right, functionally, we're looking kind of okay. I wanted to put a whole bunch of temperature shift plates at the top here as well. So let's go and do that. Utilities, temperature shift plates. What do I have that is close to hand? Probably not the Ignis rock because that is very much not to hand. We've got some obsidian down here, right? Yeah, let's use the obsidian. Cool. We'll just kind of spread them out every other block or so uh, so that it does the best uh, heating job it can. I believe this to be the situation that the, uh, they share temperatures amongst sort of the, the, the blocks around them. So the, the temperature shift plate is in the middle, but it shares the temperature for the three by three around it, uh, which would be very interesting. Why is this losing heat out the side here? What's going on there? Oh man, and I thought the insulated tiles took a while to build. These, uh, these temperature shift plates, Whoa, they must take a good 30, 40 seconds each. Ha, I wondered why everyone was working so hard over here. And then I was like, I wonder how the plastic's doing. So I clicked on this and I noticed it was zero. I was like, oh no, what's going on? So I came over this way and I was like, oh yeah, the atmosphere 
checkpoint is not going to be letting anybody past, is it? So hopefully someone's going to be coming along. Dr. Captain Subs himself. Come on, my man, you can do it. Uh, he's going to turn that off and then allow people down here to start turning some things. But of course, we've got no power, so I don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully the lumber and coal. Coal? Coal? Yeah, we got some coal down here. Hopefully the lumber and coal will provide enough power just to let us turn that handle. Get some, get some polymers. So need those polymers. Oh, wait, 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 this guy, look, 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 he makes plastics, let's wrangle him at the super high priority, and then we'll come down over this way, and at the same sort of situation, uh, you, we want to drop off, don't, don't give me a hassle like that, uh, those glossy dracos, are those the only ones that we can do? Okay, gl glossy draco seems like that, uh, Carissa Starvation, oh, it's you, don't, don't worry about you for the moment. Yeah, glossy Draco. There we go. There we go. All right, decipher is currently on it. All right, my man. Can you can you do that, please? And then we can get some more get some more plastics. Oh, that would be so good. If for some reason it is not decipher coming along to grab this guy, it is the Doctor Captain Subs. I'm fine with that. I mean, a doctor is just a vet that can only work with one human, uh, one type of species, right? That that that's fine. That's fine. No, he's going to have dropped him down here somewhere already, isn't he? I don't know. Um, what, what did you do with him, buddy? What did you do? Did he just disappear? Did he just disappear? I don't know. I don't know. We're still carrying him. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, hopefully, it'll, this will go through the downtime. Please, my friend, we should be able to do this. Uh, use lavatory toilet. I mean, like, you, you can totally get on that, but you've got to get this creature. Oh, look. Oh, look. we got a little baby glossy jerkly. Oh, he must have literally just been born. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get this guy in here, and then boom. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. Going to turn the priority up for this as well. Oh, oh, it must have happened instantly. Let's go over to here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, 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 look. We've got ourselves a little glossy Draco without the plastic. That means that we have instantly access to the steam turbine. That is beautiful. Can can I swap it around? Yeah, it does let me know. Right, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so I need some power now. That's going to be very important. Heavy conductive wire. No, just, just heavy what wire would have done. Uh, we'll put that over there. And then I'm going to just completely copy this design down here obviously inverted uh, and then the utilities temperature shift play we'll go for the obsidian again i want to put one in the middle there and one in the middle there all right beautiful hopefully that will be at highest priority a nice easy thing for our people to come through and do we've got hydrogen that we really need to deal with there but all of this is slowly getting pumped out if i left, left this door open and this door closed i think you can see the reason why so that all the gases in here can get drawn down and through here rather than having to deal with the gases on the outside I'm going to call this a backflow stacker. I don't know what it's actually called, but I, I like it. Contraflow stacker? I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with a proper name for it. But the one here is doing its work, uh, like, overtime, as you can see. We've only got two gases coming through here, and it is just, like, stack, 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 stack. We haven't even got gases coming down this far where it's just the two gases stacking on top of each other. Ooh, we literally just got that far, and then it's back again. Oh, this is beautiful. I like, I like watching this. This is great. Wow, 150 kilograms off of that Drecklet. That is amazing. We're definitely going to have to make more use of that. Oh, I wish I, I wish I'd known in the in the past. I could have just totally stacked up on them. So we're on to the point where we're moving the majority of the hydrogen out here. Though I've noticed there's all this carbon dioxide just kind of got stuck here. I was expecting it just to get pulled through once all the hydrogen is done. But I thought that was a little too slow. So I've started setting up a bottler on auto empty here. Uh, and these guys coming along throw a little bit of water down the bottom and uh, push those uh, gases up and over. Uh, you can see we've already got the chlorine out of there. Oh, of course, some of it is coming from this way. But the chlorine and natural gas are being pushed out of there. Uh, and yeah, hopefully this will be cleared out relatively soon. Wait, wait, wait. What's this? When did this guy turn up? Ah, oh, beautiful though. Beautiful. 1% incubation. Must be brand new. This pumping process is taking a lot longer than I originally gave it credit for. So I'm going to take a gas element sensor and I'm going to pop it here. Uh, and we're going to go full power on that one. And we're going to be detecting steam. Yeah, steam. Uh, so that if we're not detecting steam, this door is open. But if we do detect steam, this door is closed. And that way we can keep the gas pump going and then actually, like, level all this off now and see if we can actually get this running. Because uh, I'd like to know whether these melt or not. Because that's my main question. Will they melt? Wait, wait, wait. Green wire should open this, right? Surely. Okay, we got it working, we got it working, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, I had to uh, rip it down and put it back up. Rip it down and put it back up. 
Okay, we're going to restrict access to everyone that's not misaligned and mad, Frank. We're going to turn on this set of atmospheric suits over here. We're going to enable that building. And then we're going to come across here and we're going to go, hey, I want to deconstruct that. I want to deconstruct all of this. And I want to rip this down. Oh, let's see how it goes. Okay, Mad Frank is on his way in. We'll see what actually happens here because anything could actually happen here. I'm really a little bit worried about this. This is the last thing to come down before we actually start getting inundated with steam. And now we just get to see what actually happens. Oh, I hope it all works out. Okay, so the steam is uh, kind of running, ra racing around here. We're at 90 degrees, so it's not the end of the world. As long as we're not uh, pushing up massively high, we should be okay. I kind of want to watch over on this this point of view right now. Mad Frank, of course, one of our top builders, so we should be able to get through all this pretty quickly. I'm a little bit interested to see how he will do with the digging as well. Of course, Mr. Lion should be doing the dig, but... Uh-huh, uh-huh, what's, what's going on? No, okay, I thought I thought she would be coming to do that, but it turns out that was uh, Luna Cop. Okay, so the fact that we are uh, encased in a atmosphere suit seems to be working incredibly well for us. Now, the real question, of course, is does Mad Frank have the ability to dig through that? Yes, he does. Okay, that that's fine. I've got a feeling maybe not the obsidian, though, as I say that, he's like, Pah, doubt me, will you? And let me show you exactly how I can dig. I also now want to have a look and see if this is currently... Uh, um, it says it's idle. It's not quite dormant, so we'll we'll wait and see how this rolls. Okay, terrified of how this is going to work out now. We've got our hydrogen and our carbon dioxide just floating through. We've got water down at the bottom here. I'm wondering whether I wanted to put temperature shift plates running up to uh, make sure that this water down here flashes into steam or not. Uh, I think we're all right. I think we're all right for the moment. A downtime has happened. Forrest has spent the entire day stood there like that. Hopefully this means that all of the gases are going to be pulled out of this way. That that would be great. That would be great. We are starting to lose the amount of carbon dioxide we had, and we know nothing about this. But Forrest is the man to come in and analyze, and we do have the uh, atmosphere suits up now, so hopefully that will also work out well for us. In fact, they erupts for 266 seconds every 500 seconds, 600 seconds. That half the time, right? It's on. Oh, I mean, it could could be bad. Could be bad. We might might get overwhelmed. Food shortage? No, no. Actual no. Why, why have we got a food shortage? All right, let's see if the printing pod can save us. Uh, Murph leaves. No, it can't save us, but we'll take them anyway. Hmm, we've got this weird situation where we've got four puffs up here, which is generally what this place can take, but because we've got an egg there, they cast themselves as cramped, so I've uh, asked the next person to come along and beat this, person, this, this one puff up. So I'm taking bets now. Who wants to reckon that this is actually dormant right now, the steam vent? I, I think it might be. By the time that Forrest comes along and checks it all out, I think we're going to find out that it is indeed dormant. Anyway, Mr. Lion coming up, trying to uh, thin out their numbers right now. During my research that I did during for like the steam turbines and stuff like that, I found a pretty remarkable way for making sure you can keep your uh, ranch numbers exactly where you want them to be. It takes a cr cr sensor in one room and then a crit sensor in the other. You have like an auto killing device in there. It's, it's really quite cool. And we'll go around making a few of those on here, here, and here at some point. Oh, 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 it's rumbling. It's rumbling. It's rumbling. All right, let's have a look. Let's get the F4 out and see if any actually gets produced. Uh, hopefully, it will just start spilling out now. I don't think it's going to be a high enough temperature for a little while to actually get the steam rolling to the temperature that we want. It doesn't actually appear to be doing anything. Uh, oh, it'll be uh, pressuring up, right? Rising pressure. Okay, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Over pressure? No, no, I disagree most, most heartily. Okay, skill vent uh, it is currently emitting. Let's have a look at the F4 and see what we got. We got all this steam up here. It seems to be, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? It seems, to, why is this not working? There we go, it's shut the door. All right, fine. Ooh, I was a little bit worried there. I was a little bit worried. I'm more worried that we might actually be getting some steam in this. Let's uh, once again have a look and see. I mean, all the carbon dioxide is now like pushed down into this one, maybe? I'm not sure entirely what's going on. But unfortunately, the hydrogen also causing big problems up here. Uh, let's do something like this. We'll come through and we'll dig a hole in this side. And I'm going to put in a, uh, an airflow tile and then break it again. Yeah, this steam has already got too high. Ah! 
All right, I'm just going to put on high priorities and hopefully Mad Frank will come through and do what needs to be done. Base, airflow, uh, you know what, it doesn't, doesn't actually matter. Let's, um, no, let's not do that. Let's cancel this and then let's deconstruct and let the uh, the terrible gases out. <laughs> okay, the gas is out, or at least we've uh, opened up a little slot here. Is it going to be enough air pressure to push this up and out? Five kilos, it, it's just hanging there. Why? Why is it just hanging there? Yeah, if you could overpressurize it for us, that would be great. All right, I have alert abused my way into a situation that I think is going to help out. You can see that we got this pump up here, hopefully pulling the core, the hydrogen out of there. Of course, we've got a situation where we also are a little bit exposed on this side, so let's put those down as well. I've got some tiles there and some tiles there. Hopefully, they're all going to come together and make a bit of a uh, more closed loop. I do also notice that I'm putting down, like, super high priority everywhere. That's, that's not quite what I want. Okay, the pump seems to be working. Annoyingly, it's working really slowly. There's um, some bleach stone in here as well, which really isn't helping the situation at all. Uh, the uh, gases, sorry, are making their way down here, but the fact that these are always unpowered sometimes means that we get a little bit of backflow uh, and that slows us down, but it seems to be working out. It's just only we could clear some of these tiles here. You can see we've already gone down 10 grams just in the time we spoke, so it, it's going to take its time, but it is going to get there. Oh, we're down to, like, micrograms, thousands of micrograms, which is actually, like, five grams, you know? But uh, we, we are we are totally there. We're down to the three. Oh, yeah, this is good. Unfortunately, downtime has just struck, so we're going to uh, have some bad time. Suffocating? What's that? Oh, I bet people are inside atmosphere suits when we've closed it, closed down the, uh, the checkpoint. But we'll see how this works out for us overnight. I'm, I'm literally going to just, like, blast through it, as I was saying. Okay, oh, 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 most of the steam is up and running now. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. It's not as uh, low a temperature, as, uh, sorry, as high a temperature as I would like, but 172 does seem to work out quite well. Uh, now we want to have a look at what the water's coming out like. It's coming out pretty cool, actually. Coming out for uh, 60 or odd, something like that. The uh, steam turbine itself is starting to warm up. Ah, oh, this is good. We're getting some cold damage over here. I wasn't really expecting that, but what we've got to do now, slam down an insulated tile and put that at the highest priority and at the same time we want to uh, deconstruct these buildings over here. I knew it would happen during downtime, but that's no problem. Cold damage was not what I was expecting. Uh, but this this is all uh, sacrificial up here, just to try and get this place cleared out. I am worried about the steam that is going through here, though. Well, we ran out of power. Good. <laughs> Thankfully, we got ourselves a little bit of a liquid lock set up there, so that's pretty nice, that's pretty nice. That saves us having to panic quite as much, though. All these people are currently panicking about how we're going to get this filled up. Uh, that's good, though. We, we kind of want them to be panicking. All right, here come the uh, the actual builders, movers, and shakers right now. Hopefully, we'll just get this all filled in. And No, no, we've got to wait longer. Okay. All right, and Mimi finally filling in that insulated tile. It's going to take a moment to uh, have a look at these steam turbines here. You can see they're not quite producing at the highest possible that they can, but that's because the steam is just kind of mixing itself up, deciding whether it wants to be too hot or too cold. Obviously, the exact temperature that we would like to have in here is about 200 but it's going to fluctuate above and below that uh, and any fluctuation above or below that will give us uh, less less um, power out of that but with that i'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure ladies and gentlemen i will see you guys next time we're going to go and work on the oil wells down below now that we finally got this cooling set up over here we might try and figure out some other things that we can do with that as well but i will see you then when we're gonna do that bye